had an idea. What if, what if I went to the chain restaurants, the Fridays, the Applebee's, the, the Chili's. What if I went to these places and I got their weird drinks? Cause they make some weird drinks. What if I got them? Got my greedy little hands on them and we, we drank them on the show. And then I try to improve on them. We see if it can be, if there's a, an idea there, something that can be salvaged. Something that when it's not in the confines of an executive bartender adhering to a profit margin, we can make a decent drink from it. Let's see if there is merit in the chains of America, the chains that bind us. So I figured we should start at Applebee's. They're everywhere, everybody knows Applebee's. And Applebee's happens to have some crazy damn drink menu. They Every month they come out with a new $5 drink. And I figured we would test the drinks at Applebee's. Now, how do we do that? Because I can't shoot my show at an Applebee's. One, um, they would probably say no. And two, it's a little noisy in there. There's a lot of copyright issues with the TVs and the sounds and the things that are happening in an Applebee's. But we have a solution. Not a sponsor of the show, Yeti. Yet. Yeti is not yet a sponsor of the show. What do you think, Yeti? Huh? Ah? Ah? Okay. I've got a shark bowl and a blue Hawaiian Long Island iced tea. So let's, uh, one, let's find out if my harebrained scheme worked and we've actually saved a drink in here. Oh, heck yeah, this is perfect. It's still slushy. Oh my God, that's perfect. This worked so good. <laughs> I'm so happy. Like, we've done it! <laughs> now, Applebee's, I can talk about your drink as much as I want. <laughs> Here in the confines of my own laboratory. So, okay, we got a shark bowl. I keep wanting to call it a shark bite. And it is uh, supposedly Captain Morgan, blue tropical Applebee's mix, and gummy sharks. There's three ingredients. And only one gummy shark, so it's way down less ice, presumably. Uh, let's see how the shark bowl is. What does that smell like? Oh, that smells like a uh, blue raz flavor, blue raz flavor. That is very sweet. Wow. Whoa, man. <gasps> Woo. I'm gonna need some insulin. That reminds me of 1992, riding my bike up to the 7-Eleven, getting a blue raspberry Slurpee, having a pocket full of quarters, because the 7-Eleven, where I grew up, had a Mortal Kombat machine, and we would descend on that place like maniacs and just slurp the Slurpees and rock fatalities. And I was terrible. I was like a pretty young kid, and I was not very good at, I've never was good at Mortal Kombat, but it was a fun summer. I was way too young to be riding my bike two miles to 7-Eleven. Wow. Okay, so it is blue flavored, blue candy flavored. I'm, yeah, maybe I'm getting some like, something that you would interpret it as a coconut flavor. In there it is very loudly blue and very sweet. Let me see if I can fish out my fish and eat it. Oh, there it is, look at that little sharky guy. Rock solid, totally frozen solid, what the? Oh my, it's inedible. It turned to stone. Oh, let's wash that down with this. It just tastes blue. I, I mean, it really just tastes like blue, blue raspberry, wild berry, whatever nonsense. It just tastes like candy. It tastes like something a kid would eat. I mean, it, uh, keep this away from your children. It's full of alcohol, presumably. When I see this shape and size cup, all I can think of is, he chose poorly. And indeed, I have. I've got the drink. We've got the shark bowl. It is so sugary and citric acid -y. Um, it is very sour. This is basically a shark bite. That's what this is trying to be. It's a shark bite. They're calling it a shark bowl. Sometimes they call these a shark attack. It's like a combination, usually a spiced rum, lime, simple. Often it's just written as sour mix, same idea. And blue curacao, right? It's like three things, it's stupid simple. Sometimes they're shaken, sometimes they're blended. I like them shaken. I mean, I don't really like them at all, but you know, if you're gonna have it, I think it looks better shook than blended. They did theirs blended, which, kind of inhibits the one thing that these drinks always have, which is usually is a few drops of grenadine on top of it so that it looks like there's blood in the water. Uh, it looks like a shark attack with your little sharky guy. Sometimes there's like a, there's a cool tiki mug that looks like a big shark mouth. 
Sometimes you serve these in those so like they bleed out of the mouth of the shark. I don't know why they didn't put the, maybe it was too violent or something, like the blood in the water, and that's why they made a shark bowl instead of a shark attack. Or I don't know, they're just putting their own stamp on it. I think the response to this is to just try to make the best shark bite we can and put this in the rear view mirror behind me. Okay, so I'm gonna do a shake version of that. Like it makes me drool. It's so sweet and so sour. I don't normally use spiced rum on this show, but I'm lazy, so I'm going to. This lime, we're gonna cut this lime in half. Let's get an ounce of lime juice in here. Let's do, this drink is not subtle. This is sweet, sweetie TD. So let's do an ounce of simple syrup. Shrimp, shrimp, una ounce. There you go, you got one lime juice, one simple. That's our sour mix, right? Let's do one and a half ounces of spiced rum. I'm gonna use Sailor Jerry. If you gotta use a spiced rum, this is probably the best one for your money. I mean, there might be better-ish ones. People like the Kraken, man. I tried that Kraken stuff. I can't stand it. Oh, God. Listen, I don't taste coconut specifically in there. I just taste something in there that is reminiscent of a coconut rum. And I think I want that in here. I think I also want some pineapple juice. There we go. We're gonna do one ounce of this, not uh, equal. So one and a half ounces of the Sailor Jerry, one ounce of this. Like I said, sweet, you know? We're not trying to be shy. We're not, we're not being coy about it. This drink is sweet. One ounce of pineapple. All right, we got blue curacao. We'll see what it shakes up like. I think half an ounce will be good with some air in there. It's gonna lighten up a lot. Air and, and water and ice. It's blue curacao. It's not, we don't have to get all bent out of shape about this. One cracked ice cube. Oh yeah, that looks like a nice green ocean. Okay. And one of the reasons I wanted to get a little pineapple in there is because it's gonna make it nice and frothy. There we go. Not quite making our wash line, but this glass is insanely huge. It's just insane. I'm gonna garnish that with our shark. I don't know, maybe a couple of sharks. Maybe make it a feeding frenzy. Yeah, put some sharks in there. I want them to stick up top. How do we do that? What if it's a shark with a parasol? I'll take a parasol. I know why I'm doing it. I want it to sit on the surface of the drink. That's why. Put it, you know, so the shark can carry it. There we go. Our shark with an umbrella. We need a few drops of Rose's Grenadine. A dasher top would be nice, or an eyedropper, or something like that. I'll just use a bar spoon. Put a little freeding frenzy in the water here. Yeah, look at that. That's good. We have a shark attack. Shark bite going on right here. Frothy, delicious shark bite. Here we go. Yeah, that's a pretty good top. That's not bad. I mean, it's not fancy. It's not smart. <laughs> it's not... My shark is not... Shark! Shark! Why are you just sinking away? Like deep water creatures. Yeah, he wants to go to the bottom. He's running silent and deep. It's not a bull shark. It's like a tiger shark. It's fine. It's fine. This is not fancy. It's not elevated at all. But <laughs> it does taste like a real drink. It tastes like something you would reasonably get at a place that had its own name. It wasn't a chain at a, a bar at an all-inclusive resort or an island placey something, whatever. You know, like, it is... Let me give you the actual flavor profile here. Coconut, pineapple, ooh, a little, little sweetie sour, yum-yum thing going on, like a Fruity Pebbles, Fruit Loops kind of vibe. Some vanilla notes? I don't know. There's some spicy thing happening. Uh, it's got that frothy top on it. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. I don't know. It was a whim. I, don't know. I like the pineapple, though. I think the pineapple's a good move. Maybe you do pineapple rum. That's a thought. And it has this fun look. It's ridiculous. It doesn't taste like liquefied Sour Patch Kids, which is what this tastes like. This tastes, I mean, straight up, this tastes like it came from a, a, a 7-Eleven Slurpee. It just tastes like wild blue raspberry Slurpee sports drink, which maybe you want. This genuinely tastes like a cocktail. It's a hell of a lot better. I, I feel like I'm underselling how much better it is. It's a lot better. It's way better. Drink this, not that. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I mean, look, it's it's way, way, way better. It's still trash. Hey though, it's okay to enjoy trash once in a while. I like some trash. Trash is fine, man. Not everything has to be highbrow. This is good, clean fun. This is just good, clean fun. We're just having some fun. Why do you think these restaurants make that? Uh, this takes longer. Mm -hmm. This is probably literally coming from a Slurpee machine, maybe with a slug of rum thrown in it or something, right? Shark Bowl was eight seventy five. It was eight seventy five, and it's huge, and there's very little rum in it. It's mostly soft drink. This is probably something you know, in terms of cost, it was like a buck, a buck twenty five for Applebee's. Um, this is going to cost a lot more than that. I can't do the math off the top of my head. 
maybe we, we, after the fact we can figure it out on a screen saying you know what it really costs um that's the main reason because these are standardized really cheap probably don't even require refrigeration until they're being made they just throw them like it's a mix that goes into like a slushy machine or something i'm guessing and this has multiple bottles this is going to cost money and also also because they don't have like a discerning clientele people are ordering shark bowls i mean look to be honest like people ordering shark bowls at applebee's don't really care if it's a great shark bite or just kind of sort of a shark bite that's a you know like it's fine it's fine that's why but this is what it's trying to be or something like this you know i mean this is like i said this is sort of me throwing as much artillery at the shark bite cocktail as i possibly can i truly hate these gummy sharks i you we ordered these and they make me absolutely feel like i'm sick like i can't eat them i when i came in the mail i was like oh gummies and i ate three of them and i was like why does that taste like that they're so bad they're really gross they're not for human consumption all right after this let's do the other drink we brought home from applebee's right after this we're back with our next can of ooze and you can actually it's crazy this has been in here for quite a while now still has its original ice so this, what's what, what awaits me in this Yeti? Another blue drink. They just were the most interesting ones on the menu, I guess. This is a blue Hawaiian. Uh, they were all served in this, right? Even this thing? It wasn't served, yeah. Oh, you get the lemon. There we go. Thanks, Yeti, for being not yet, y not Yeti, a sponsor on this show. <laughs> I think we do great things together, Yeti, call me. Okay, here we go. This is a blue Hawaiian Long Island Icy. I haven't tried this before. I just want to pause and think, who, who, who does that? Who decided, well, let's, let's just dump a blue Hawaiian into a Long Island iced tea and see what happens. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's like, uh, maybe to make this into a blue Hawaiian LIT, they threw some tequila in there. It's just Tito's, Malibu coconut, Tanqueray, and blue curacao, allegedly. Tito's, Malibu, Tank, and blue curacao. Allegedly, I actually, I, I don't believe them in the slightest. That's there's all. a lemon floating in it. Like presumably there's some juices in here and stuff, right? Okay, Elvis, don't steer me wrong here. This tastes like swimming pool water with a sheen of like sunblock on it. That's kind of what it tastes like. This is, honestly, this is truly bad. It tastes vaguely tart and chemical and bitey, vaguely. Um, I think it's like this kind of limited amount of Tanqueray gin that's been watered down by the ice and the rest of the ingredients. I definitely get the Malibu, no question, I'm mistaken. What does this drink do on your menu that the Shark Bowl doesn't? That's what I wanna know. Like, what do we need another big blue tropical drink on the menu? We gotta have two of them. Okay, here's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to build a version of this that tastes a little, I think, fresher. I was gonna say features the spirits in it a little bit more, but in fact, that would not be in keeping with the concept of it being a Long Island iced tea, which is a stealth spirits drink. Long Island iced tea shouldn't taste like anything. It just tastes like iced tea. This doesn't taste anything like iced tea. It's really just a blue Hawaiian with a couple of base spirits. That's what they're trying to say. It's a split base spirit blue Hawaiian. Good version of a drink called a blue Hawaiian Long Island iced tea. Ah. Uh. What would it be? What could it be? What is anything? Who am I? How did I get into this situation? Pilfering drinks from Applebee's to pull them apart in my home lab. Why? How did this happen? Oh my God. Uh, the idea is it's a blue drink that's high in alcohol that doesn't taste like it's high in alcohol that is admittedly not terrifically sweet. The other one was pure syrup. It was unbearable so that's our goal here so let me think what we want to do we're going to start with yeah i think we're okay to go with an ounce of lime half an ounce of the malibu trying to be a little subtle with the liqueur here and then we're going to go half an ounce of simple syrup and then half an ounce of the blue curacao next we're going to do one ounce of gin london tanqueray uh apparently vodka 6100 whatever the heck this was called leftover from the vodka trials episode one ounce of this yeah does the vodka really need to be in here could we replace the vodka with other spirits absolutely i'm just not my head is full of air at the moment i don't have a whole lot of great ideas in my skull you know not every day all my synapses are firing okay they just aren't today it was a heavy one so whatever one ounce of plantation five year this is what i'm gonna say this is going to be fine this is going to be a very fine version of that drink that 
does taste fresher, does taste better, does taste more made. Like made not from a mix, right? I might try something after we mix this up with some modifiers that'll throw it a little off kilter, just because I have some ideas. Like I think we could have more interesting things happening here. So let's just shake this up. Okay, look, there's another blue ring, right? Now they, they garnished it with a lime, a lemon wheel. We're gonna float like three of them on the surface of this because like, it's more fun that way, right? This is my version of their Blue Hawaii Long Island iced tea. Boozy, not bad. Definitely a drink for somebody who wants to knock themselves into orbit. It is strong, drinkable. It's a deceptive drink because you look at this blue ridiculous thing, you expect it to be like this overly sweet blob of syrup but it's actually pretty, um, uh, it's pretty dry, honestly, at this mix. And I'm not gonna say it's challenging. It's not, it's a totally approachable beverage. It has a very tart, dry, slight astringentness to it from the gin. The gin is very, it, it, this drink presents as a pretty acidic drink. It's on the edge of being too acidic. It's not, and that resolves into like a pineapple, mellowy rumness. It's actually not bad. The thing is, it, it looks like this. So when you drink that and it's not pure sugar, it really throws you off. It's like, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's, what is that? That's, uh, yikes. Um, and then you have to like recalibrate and think about it. You're like, okay, okay, yeah, I'm into that. This, you can't really taste the alcohol in it. Maybe that's a desirable thing. I, I think this is a more interesting cocktail. Now, do I think it'd be a little sweeter? Yeah. I think with everything we got going on there, we could have a little bit more sugar in that. Is there places we could get sweetness from that's not just pure, simple syrup? We could look at other liqueurs, maybe. Could it have some spiciness to it? I'm interested in that idea. I think some Angostura bitters could go good in there. It would really mess up the look. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to do something like that. So I put a little Ango right there on this side of this massive bowl and try to drink it with a drop of Angostura. Nah, that's good. I like that, that's fun. Hmm. Just throw three of those in there and see how much they disappear when we mix it in. Sure, that's fine. It just brings the green down a little bit. That brings a lot of character to the drink. Four or five drops of Angostura, this is a big drink. Right, that's downright balanced. The one caveat I'm gonna say is that it doesn't really taste like a blue Hawaiian or a Long Island iced tea, but it is a tasty drink that serves the same purpose in many, 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 many ways. It is cinnamon and allspice and Caribbean I mean, like it evokes like jerk chicken in a way. It has this very tartness to it, this very tartness to it. It's very tart. It's not overly sweet. You still have plenty of notes from the gin and rum, which this very strange new flavor, I would say. I mean, it's not an extremely complex flavor. It's just one that is like, huh, that's different. After we get our bitters and citrus, it gives way to what I feel like are junipery elements of the gin kind of run through with coconut. Does the plantation really show up here? No, not really. This is a pretty mellow rum. I had originally, I was thinking about bringing some fire to it, like throwing in some kind of Jamaican funk, but I think that would actually be out of place here. Bacardi, you could use like some Bacardi light. I think it'd be fine. I don't think you need to use plantation. I just use something that doesn't have like off notes. I would stay clear of anything that's very, very present that will steer the drink in a very different direction. And the Malibu, definitely stick with that. You might even wanna bump it up just a touch. I think that you could stand a little more coconut than a half an ounce in here, maybe three quarters of an ounce to an ounce. I know, I, I, we did it, it's an improved version. This is a better drink. It's a better drink. Again, you're gonna ask, why do they sell it this way and that way? Well, one, this is less accessible. That's right off the bat. Like this is not something everybody will be able to get into in the way that this is, this is a much more interesting drink. I want this drink a lot more. Um, it's a weird thing for this drink to be blue. If you took this drink and dumped it into a tiki mug and put a little garnish on the top of it so that people couldn't see it, their expectations would be different and I think it would, it would actually click much better. But the drink is blue. And like to take a drink that is intended to be blue and unblue it is like a betrayal of the, the thesis, right? Like we can't do that. You have to, if it, it's blued itself. We have to stay with it being blued. And maybe that's weird. Maybe that dichot, like maybe that disconnect, <laughs> you know, oh, it's blue, whoa. It's like a sucker punch. You know, it really comes out of nowhere. It's fun. Balanced, drinkable. Once you get past that weird disconnect of it being blue and not being the sweet sugar bomb you expect it to be, 
I think it's kind of cool. I don't know. I win. I did it. I made it better. <laughs> uh, of course, my drink costs a lot more money to make than Applebee's drink because I use a lot of stuff. Vodka. We don't need vodka in this, by the way. You can just ditch the vodka. Just take the vodka out and split it between rum and your and your gin or increase the rum. I don't know. I, I think that the counterpoint to that is that, well, if you do that, you'll increase the gin. And I think there's enough gin in here now. I don't know if I would want to increase the gin. So maybe I'll walk that idea back. Should the vodka instead be tequila to lean further in the direction of a Long Island iced tea? A mild one. Yeah, I, I don't think that going with a silver tequila would be a crazy concept here. Some of them are oh, like, I think you want one that's just like very low key vegetal, not very, very, very pungent, right? I think that would actually be okay. All right guys, that's the show. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, so this episode, um, trying some new stuff. I, there's more. We're going, we're going. I'm going to be pilfering drinks. No, we're going to, I'm going to do, I think this is a great idea. I love this. This is a fun idea. I want to do more of these. Um, let me know in the comments where you want me to go. You want me to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. You want me to go to Chili's. You want me to go to the Cracker, the Cracker Barrel for Liquor License? No, Liquor License. You want me to go to whatever chain restaurants? Let me know. We will do it. And uh, we'll take the drinks and see what else we can do with them. It'll be fun. And if you have ideas, by the way, for better ways to do this episode format, let me know about that too. New ideas are always good. Maybe you want me to see me use the drink as an ingredient, like it was Iron Chef. Maybe you want me to recreate it exactly. I don't think that's very exciting, to be honest. Hey, so I'm on Instagram, on Twitter, I'm on Twitch, I'm on Patreon. All of those things are on screen right below your eyes now. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. If you liked this, I have been making this show for six years and I'm never going to stop. But there are a bunch of episodes that maybe you haven't seen. Check them out. They're all right up here. Uh, and I'll see you very soon with another episode of HTD.